Okay, uh, our website is kind of updated as well. Uh, so uh, for the ease of like editing it, we are going to use uh, a different uh, uh, like uh, system for the website. But if you go through uh, our usual link, it is going to forward it to, to the new version of it. So no worries about that. And on the lab page, uh, as you remember, for each of the labs, we have the material here. So we are going to first start with our slides for this lab. And we are going to also use SQL Lit Studio today. Uh, I guess uh, in the second hour, uh, we are going to start looking at it. Uh, there is also the relational schema example. So we are going to actually uh, look at each of them. So in the last lab, what we did was to create an ER diagram. And in the ER diagram, we design our database, right? Uh, we uh, define our entity sets, relationships, etc. And each of these elements in the implementation will be converted into a table. So in the ER diagram, what we have is entity sets, relationships, right? And while going into the implementation, everything is going to be represented as a table. And according to the status or the settings of the tables, there will be the logical uh, distinction of the entity sets and relations, etc. So uh, before directly going into the implementation, we introduce a separate stage called relational schema. And in this relational schema, actually what we are doing is to describe the tables in the database. So our goal is to describe the tables uh, so that we can implement them easier. So there is no standard way of writing the relational schema, but we are going to try to talk about the names of the attributes. So this is like an example relational schema for a table. So whether this is going to be a, an entity set or a relationship, it is going to be determined by the foreign keys that we have here, actually. But for now, if we just look at it as a table, we are going to list the attributes of that table. So whether it's an entity set, in an entity set, remember, we can have attributes. In a relationship as well, we can have some attributes. We are going to write about the types of the attributes. So, so far in the ER diagram, we just have the names of the attributes. But while going into the implementation, we also need to know about the data type, right? Whether we store a number there or a text or a date, etc. And in the implementation as well, we can uh, say that some attributes are going to be required. So required attributes, or you can write it using the keyword not now. To create a row or an entry for that table, we have to have those attributes that are required or that are specified as not now. So for example, if this was for a student, the student ID could be a not now attribute we have to have that id so that we can create a new entry for a student we can also define the attribute as unique so for example primary keys are by their nature automatically uh, unique uh, they, they include unique data but for some attributes as well we can define them as unique we can say that okay for example uh, the okay there is a question if the attribute one is a primary key do we still have to specify not now? For this, uh, for primary keys, they are uh, by default they are unique and they are specified as not now. So you don't have to explicitly say that for a primary key that it is unique and it is not now. Uh, for primary keys, we already know that, so you don't have to specify that for primary keys. But for example, in this case. The primary key is attribute one and attribute two. So actually the primary key is a composite one. Two attributes make up the primary key. Because of that, uh, both one and two together are going to be unique. And separately, if we just look at the attribute two, if we want it to be unique, then we need to specify that it is by itself also unique. So we are going to see examples of that. So the primary key is going to be one or more attributes, but for every table, we need to have some primary key. So for entity sets in the ER diagram, we were showing the primary key, but for the 
relations, we were not showing the primary keys explicitly in the ER diagram. In this relational schemas, we are going to also talk about the primary keys of the relationships. And there is also the concept of foreign keys. So with the foreign key attributes, we are actually relating some attributes to an existing attribute in a different table. So for example, here we have the table one and the attribute one in this table can be a foreign key to the different attribute in a different table. So for example, attribute X in table two. We are going to actually uh, look more detailed examples of it, but uh, as a summary uh, in the relation schema, we would like to define our tables. We would like to show more information about our tables. So starting with entity sets, so trust, translating an entity set into the relational schema is going to be very easy. So we need to know the name of the entity set. So that is the table's name. For example, in this case, it is user table. We need to then specify uh, the type of the attributes, right? In this user table, we have ID, name, surname, and password attributes. And in the project descriptions you have, uh, some of the names of the attributes will give hints you about uh, the types of the attributes. Uh, and you are uh, like free to choose uh, any kind of uh, data type. So the types are, in general, they are going to be numeric texts or dates. There is also the Boolean type which is true or false type. So uh, these are like the main categories that you can uh, simply define your attributes. There are also like subcategories for the numbers. For example, it can be an integer, it can be a floating number, etc. Uh, but in the relational schema, you don't really need to give that much detail about the data type. So if you just use these four uh, general types, they are numeric, text, date, and the Boolean types, uh, it is enough. So if uh, some attributes are required, you can also specify them as not null. For example, in this uh, one, ID is going to be numeric. So that's something that we decide. It could be a text as well. Uh, and the name, surname are going to be text and password and ID. So for creating a new user, we decided that we have to have ID and password Therefore, they are specified as not null attributes. The primary key of this table is from the ER diagram. We know that the underlined one is going to be the primary key. Since there is only one attribute that's underlined, that is going to be our primary key. So for the user table, ID is our primary key. And that's it. And for some entity sets, if there are multiple attributes that are underlined, then our primary key is going to be a composite one. So we are going to list a bunch of attributes next to the primary key. And this is also kind of about the question that we have. Since ID is already the primary key, we know that it is going to be not null and it is going to be unique. So we really don't need to write not null for the ID in this uh, relational schema. So if we have an easy relationship, then uh, for the child entities, what we are going to have is going to uh, be like this. So in the child entities, we need a foreign key that is going to reference the primary key of the parent. So for example, in this picture, we have the user as our parent and we have teacher and student as child entities. So teacher, in teacher table, we need some foreign key that is going to reference the primary key of the user. So what is the primary key of the user? It is ID, right? So for the teacher, we need some foreign key that is going to reference the user's ID. And what is going to be that attribute is actually something we decide, right? We do not explicitly write the name of that attribute in the teacher, uh, in the ER diagram for teacher. Right? If we just look at the ER diagram for a teacher, no new attribute is defined. We just have user as our parent. Because of that, we need some foreign key. So that's going to be an attribute. We decided that let's call it TID. So this TID is going to be a foreign key 
that is going to refer to the primary key ID of the parent table user. So since for every table we need some primary key and in the teacher table we just have this TID attribute it is also defined as our primary key. So is this clear any problems about this one? So for the child entities we need a foreign key that is going to refer to the primary key of the parent. Because of that even when we do not introduce any new attributes for the child table we need to include a foreign key. So foreign key is just an attribute but that attribute is connected to some other attribute in a different table. It is going to guarantee that whenever we would like to create a teacher that teacher should first exist as a user. So in the user table we have a bunch of users and in the teacher table we are going to store the IDs of the users that are assigned as teachers. So some users are going to be teachers, some users are going to be students and in the ER diagram there could be also some users that are not, that are not teachers or students. So there can be uh, some such users as well. So let's say that we created, we just created a new user and we did not insert it to the teacher or the student table yet, then it is going to be neither of them. But for some users, we would like to insert their IDs to the teacher table. And to store that in the teacher table, we also need this TID foreign key. And in the student table, similarly, we need some uh, foreign key attribute and we decided to call that SID so these names we just decided them uh, they are not shown in the ER diagram but uh, we just combined the parents primary key so it was ID this is the students ID SID it is the primary key of this table it is a foreign key that is going to refer to the ID of the user table plus we have the scholarship attribute so any additional attribute in the child table, we also include them into our relational schema for the child entity. So this is some other example. In this example, for a device, the primary key is a composite one, right? Brand and the model. These two attributes contribute to our primary key for a device. Because of that, the child entities, for example, the second-hand devices, are stored in this table, in this child table. For that, we are defining two attributes, so sh brand and sh model. In the parent, we had brand and model. For the second hand, we have second hand brand, second hand model attributes. They are going to be stored in the child table. Uh, both these attributes are going to be the primary key of this table, and they are also the foreign key. So together, they are a foreign key that refers to the parent's primary key. So the lab is actually, uh, I'm uh, recording it with a different software, therefore I uh, didn't start it on the Zoom, but I'm, let's say I'm also, I just started for the Zoom, but I'm using a different software because with the Zoom cloud recording, so uh, it looks, looks at, uh, uh, it is uh, using the uh, web and if we get lag, etc., the recording also has some lag and uh, therefore I'm using a separate uh, program, but uh, I just started the Zoom as well. So just in case, uh, as a backup. Uh, okay. So uh, if the primary key of the parent is a composite one, meaning that multiple attributes are the primary key, then for the child entities as well, we need it to be the uh, composite one. So we, we included multiple attributes in the child tables and they are both the primary key of these tables and they are also a foreign key that is going to refer to the parent table. So other than that, this is actually very similar to the last one. Uh, if there are like additional attributes, we just include those attributes to our relational schema. But for relationships, so in the relationship, we need to keep a foreign key for each of the connected tables. So relation, a relationship is going to be connected to multiple tables and each of those links mean that we need to keep a foreign key that ref refers to uh, the connected table. Foreign key attributes are going to 
point to the primary key of the related table. So uh, we need to check what is the primary key of the related table. And they should have a matching type. So in the relational Shaba, remember we are uh, also showing the types, data types of these attributes. And if a foreign key is going to refer to some attributes, they should have the same type. So a text, for example, is going to refer to another text attribute. And if this was a number, it is going to refer to a number, etc. Primary key of the relationship should include a combination of these foreign keys. And we are going to determine it uh, looking at the cardinality. So we have some examples of it now. So starting with the many-to-many -many relationships. For example, in here we have members and groups. And uh, a member could be in many groups and a group can have many members in this scenario. For example, for member number one, the member number one is in group number one and it is also in group number two. So we uh, assign the same member to different groups, multiple groups. And on the other hand, for example, in group three, there are three different members. So members two, three and four are in group number three. So for this, if we just look at the tables, for example, in the member table, uh, before we decided the primary key, if we were to look at this table, we would say, okay, the names can be have duplicates, right? Uh, some members can have the same name, but member no, the number of the member is unique. So we actually, uh, looking at data, we decided that member number is going to be our primary key for the member table, similarly for the group table. And if we are to look at this new table, so this new table is for the relationship in, but in our database, everything is going to be a table, right? Everything can be written as a table. If we just look at this table and we need to decide a primary key for that table, we will see that, okay, just looking at the member number, there are some duplicates. Just looking at the group number, again, there are some duplicates. So if we are to select a primary key for this table, it is going to be the combination of these two attributes. So if we look at as a tuple, two, two of these attributes together, they do not repeat again. So one, one, we do not see any other one, one entry in this table. One, two, we do not see any one, two entry in this table. So as a tuple, these two attributes are going to become our primary key for this table. So for the many-to-many -many relationships, we can say that the combination of the foreign keys, of all the foreign keys, is our primary key. So if the relationship is many-to-many, -many, then uh, the primary key is going to be the combination of all the foreign keys. So if we are to write the relational schema, so for group and member, these are straightforward, right? These are entity sets. We just include their attributes. We just write the primary key. We also define the types of our attributes and whether they are not null or whether they are unique, etc. And for the relationship is as well. So for this relationship, we need to have foreign keys, right? We need a foreign key that is going to refer to the primary key of the member number of the member, which is member no, right? So we included member no in our table. The name here can be different. So as long as uh, we refer to the correct attribute in the different table, the names of the attributes within the relationship are not important. So this can be like the attribute X attribute y, then I'm going to write foreign key x refers to member, member no, foreign key y refers to group, group no. So as long as I refer to the correct entries or, or correct attributes in the other tables, the names of the attributes within the relationship are not important, but uh, to keep it simple, it is better to use the same names. Then while you are creating your queries, for example, you don't need to uh, think about what was the name of that attribute, etc. The uh, attributes with the same name are going to be joined, for example. So in the in table, we have two foreign keys. So member no is going to refer to the member no in table member. 
and group no inside this in table is going to refer to the group no in the group table because of these links that connect our relationship to those entity sets and since this is a many-to-many -many relationship our primary key here in this in table is going to be the combination of member no and group no so the other type was if you remember one-to-many relationships and in this version we need to check for the table of the relationship which is one which one of the attributes is non-repeating so to def define the primary key of such table we need to choose the non-repeating foreign key attributes so we have this example for owners and dogs so one owner can have multiple dogs but for a dog there is going to be only one owner so the tables for owner and dog are straightforward but for the relationship has we are matching owners with dogs and since this is a one-to-many relationship for the same owner for example owner number one there can be multiple dogs so both dog id one and two are the dogs of this owner one and for example for owner id two we have again two dogs but for a dog there cannot be multiple owners so for example whenever we see dog ID 1 in this table it is not going to repeat again because for a dog there can be only one owner because of that for this table the ideal primary key is going to be the dog ID only if we know the ID of the dog in the table has we can find a unique row if we know the owner's ID that's not enough to find a unique row right if let's say uh, the owner ID is one then it corresponds to two entries in this table but for the dog ID one it is going to only correspond to one entry in this table and we know that we cannot have any duplicates for dog ID number one because this is a one-to-many relationship and dog ID cannot repeat again because of that for a one-to-many relationship the primary key is going to be the non-repeating foreign key so owner and dog relational schema are like that and for the relationship has so this should not be called in but it should be called has in the slide uh, we need two foreign keys right because we have two links to two entity sets so for the link that goes to owner table we defined an attribute called owner ID this owner ID is going to be the foreign key which references the owner ID in the owner table also for the connection to the dog entity we defined a dog ID attribute in this table and dog ID is going to refer to the dog ID in the dog table and then the primary key of this table is going to be dog ID only why because dog id is the non-repeating attribute if we consider this table if we consider such entries there is also another option here we can make the primary key a composite one so we can say okay combination of owner id plus dog id is going to be our primary key but then we need to say that dog id is going to be unique so this setup the, the first setup is the better one but there is an alternative so i'm now showing the alternative version in the alternative ver version we say okay both foreign keys can be the primary key but the dog id by itself should be unique because this is a one-to-many relationship if we do not write this unique keyword for dog id then this is going to be uh, a many-to-many -many relationship any questions or problems about this one so there are two alter alternatives for this example the first option is the better one because uh, we are using less attributes for the primary key if it is just a dog ID then it's simpler and we do not need to specifically say that dog ID is going to be unique because it is the single primary key of this table it is going to be automatically unique but in the second option 
we are saying both our uh, foreign keys are going to be the primary key but to distinguish this from the many to many case we need to say that dog ID is going to be unique otherwise it is going to be a many to many relationship to enforce this one to many relationship we need to say dog ID is going to be unique any questions problems the other one is going to be a one to one relationship and in the one to one relationships if you remember uh, for example in this example we are uh, assigning passports to people so a passport can belong to uh, at most one person and a person can have at most one passport in this example and in the table for belongs to we are going to match passport passport IDs with the assessance of the people and if we for example have 23 as our passport ID it is going to not repeat again because this is a one-to-one -one relationship uh, if we assign a person to a passport that passport is not going to have any duplicates in this table that person's SSN is not going to have any duplicates in this table as well so in this case if we know the SSN of the person we can find the passport we can find a unique line for belongs to or if we have the ID of the passport, again, we can find a unique line in this relationship. So uh, we are going to choose the primary key of the relationship among the non-repeating attributes. In this case, both of them are not repeating. So we have two alternatives and they are going to be equal. So for example, uh, in this one, passports and uh, for the person the table definitions are like straightforward for the relationship belongs to we have two foreign key attributes we decided that SSN going to be uh, our primary key if SSN is our primary key so if we have the SSN we can find a unique line here if SSN itself is our primary key for this relationship then we also need to say that passport ID is going to be unique. Otherwise, it is going to be similar to one to many case, right? In the one to many case, we just select one attribute as our primary key. Then the other one can have repeated entries. But in the one to one case, we want to have non repeating entries for both our, for both of the attributes. And for one of them, we can assign it as the primary key. The primary key is not going to repeat but then for the other attribute other foreign key attribute in this case the passport id for that we need to say that it is going to be unique to satisfy this one-to-one -one condition so uh, the, for the foreign keys uh, they still need to refer to the related entries in the uh, related tables so ssn is going to refer to a person's ssn passport id is going to refer to a uh, passports passport ID but uh, cardinality is defined through our selection of the primary key and also how we uh, assign the unique keyword to the foreign key attributes so this was one alternative I'm now showing the second alternative in this version we can say that okay primary key is going to be the passport ID then for SSN we need to write that it is unique so one of them we assign as the primary key the other one we need to say that it is going to be unique and these alternatives are equivalent so they are basically the same sometimes if you remember for a relationship it can refer to the same entity multiple times and in such cases uh, to distinguish the role we are going to use separate foreign keys so for example in this example what we have is the send relationship it is connected to the user entity set twice um, in the ER diagram we were talking about the roles and in the relational schema what we are going to have is going to be two foreign keys one with the role of the sender so sender's ID and the other one is going to be with the role of a receiver the receiver ID so because we are connected twice to the same table I keep uh, two foreign keys so 
normally what we do was just keep a foreign key and name it as the same name using the uh, primary key of the related table, right? In the send table, I need an ID because of this link. But because of the other link, I need some ID foreign key in the send table uh, that is going to refer to the ID of the user again. Uh, to distinguish these two attributes, we decided to call them with their roles, so sender ID and receiver ID. This is a many-to-many -many relationship. So sender ID and receiver ID are going to both be, they are both are in uh, our primary key, right? So uh, the primary key is the combination of sender ID, receiver ID, plus the date. And date was an additional primary key for this relationship. If you remember, uh, the description was saying that uh, the users can send messages to other users uh, on different uh, dates. So to, if, for example, Ali is sending a message to Aisha, uh, then given that they are on different dates, Ali can send multiple messages to Aisha on different dates. So uh, that's why we included the dates as an, a, 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 an additional attribute for our primary key in this table because in the ER diagram we decided so, right? Uh, other than that, uh, this is again uh, similar to what we have. The difference is that uh, we are connected to the same table multiple times and for each of these connections we need to have a foreign key attribute but those attributes should have different names. So within a table we cannot have multiple attributes with the same name. Otherwise, we cannot distinguish those different columns. So we also have the participation con uh, constraints. So for some versions, we can uh, enforce total participation, but for some of them, we cannot. So uh, if for a relationship, the tables are not merged, so we are going to look at examples, but if each of these elements, for example, entity set table, right? For the teacher entity set, we have a teacher table. For the student entity set, we have this student table. And for the advisor relationship, we have a separate table called advisor. If this is the picture, we cannot enforce total participation through the design of the database. What we need to do is going to be in the further stages in the implementation. You can say that, okay, whenever you are creating a new student, uh, you have to also assign the advisor of this, of this student. You can do it uh, through the code, right? Uh, we are going to see examples in future. But through the design of the tables, if they are separate tables, we cannot enforce total participation. But for some cases, we can enforce. For one-to-many and one-to-one -one relationships, we can merge the tables to enforce total participation. So for this picture, for now, we have one-to-many relationship between teacher and student, meaning that for a student, there can be only one advisor teacher, but a teacher can be the advisor of multiple students. So in this case, the table for the advisor, what we have is the primary key is SID, right? If we know the student's ID, then we already know the advisor that, are, that is assigned to that uh, student. What we can do is, in this picture, we can merge the student and advisor tables. Why? Because for a student, there is going to be only one advisor teacher. So for a student, there cannot be multiple advisor teachers. Then we decide that, okay, ju let's just keep a foreign key inside the student table. And to also say that we merged the student table with the advisor table, we just made a renaming for this table. So this table is called student with advisor now. So for a student, we were keeping the SID. Originally, if we look, SID is the primary key for the student table. We also keep a scholarship in the student table. SID is a foreign key that refers to the user's ID. This is because of the ESA relationship we had there. We included an advisor TID in this table. So advisor TID is actually a foreign key that is going to refer to a teacher's TID. So originally, this advisor TID was included in the 
separate table advisor table so this TID was a foreign key for the teachers TID and since we were relating two different entities we also kept the SID in this separate advisor table but when we merge them together uh, in the student table we just include an additional attribute called advisor TID this was not directly shown in the ER diagram but because of this one-to-many relationship with the total participation we decided that for a student let's keep the advisor's TID which is a foreign key inside this table as an additional attribute in this table so it is going to be defined as not null so advisor TID is going to be not null because we want the total participation for a student to exist we need to also assign the advisor's TID for that student. So any questions or problems about this one? So in this merged version, we do not have a separate advisor table. So student and advisor tables are merged. And we can do that because of this one-to-many relationship with total participation. For many-to-many -many relationships, we cannot do that. So uh, for any many-to-many -many example, so let me just go back, for example, in this case, members are assigned to groups. For this one, we cannot enforce total participation through the design of the database. We need to do it in some other stage of the implementation. So if the total participation on teacher's side so originally it was on student side we, we are saying that for every student there should be an advisor but if this was on the teacher side if what we were saying was every teacher has to be the advisor of at least one student then again we cannot enforce this we need to do it in the application side through the code while creating a new teacher okay uh, you need to assign a student for advising for example for this scenario also, it is a good idea to reduce the number of tables. If there are lots of different tables, uh, it could be hard to manage them. In some uh, suitable positions, it is better to merge those tables and enforce, for example, total participation on the design side. So for any of the combinations, we can enforce total participation through codes in the implementation in the later stages. But if we can enforce it in the design stage, in these stages, it is better because it is going to reduce the number of tables and it is going to also make sure that it functions correctly. Because, for example, in this one, you have to have some advisor to create the student. Otherwise, it, it is not going to allow you to create a student. But if you are doing it in the implementation, uh, there is chance that maybe uh, something goes wrong and it can be still inserted into the database but uh, uh, it is not going to enforce the total participation for example so because of that for one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationships with uh, total participation on the correct side it is better to merge them for example in our ER diagram what we had was teachers were giving courses so for this example for this relationship, we can just include the teacher's ID that teaches that course. So there's one question. How about for one to many relationships without total participation? So uh, for them, you, you cannot merge them. So uh, they are not like uh, suitable for merging. But uh, there is also, uh, for example, uh, let's look at this one. So for, for this one, the total participation is actually uh, achieved by this not null constraint right if advisor TID is not null then we are going to say that okay there is total participation without the total participation we can still merge these two tables uh, because of the one to many relationship but whether it is uh, a good one or not will be decided based on uh, for how many of the students there is going to be an advisor so for example, let's say that lots of students are not going to have any advisors. In that case, to create a new student, we are keeping the advisors TID as well, but we are keeping lots of null values. So we are kind of wasting space. So you can still merge uh, tables uh, without the total participation constraint, but uh, it may uh, 
not be suitable or, or it, it might make uh, wasted space so that's uh, one thing uh, no problem so we were here uh, okay for uh, teachers teaching courses since we have total participation on course site for this gives relationship we can merge the gives and course tables together we don't really need to uh, write it into the name all the time so in this example we wrote student with advisor but if we were merging multiple tables together the name is going to get longer and longer we would like to keep the things uh, simpler and shorter uh, since for every course every course has to be taught by some teacher we are just keeping the instructor's TID inside the course table and in the course table our original primary key was the course code so it is from the ER diagram we have this foreign key instructor TID that is going to refer to a teacher's TID so we have this teacher uh, teaching that course and that is going to be not null because of this total participation constraint and without the total participation constraint we can still merge these two tables and then we need to leave this not null keyword from uh, this position but then there is the question whether we are wasting space so whether lots of things are null in uh, in the column for instructor TID or not that is going to be like determined by the application so uh, it is related to the definition of the problem so for weak entity sets and weak relationships we have to merge the tables merge the relationship with the uh, weak entity set in our implementation so this is if you look so in this picture it is a one-to-many relationship uh, with total participation on course side and if you look at this this is actually very similar this is a one-to-many relationship there is total participation on the medical report side meaning that we can actually merge the tables and to say that this is a weak entity and weak relationship we have to merge those tables so there is no other way to implement a weak entity so for the has medical report table we connected the entity set with the relationship we have the date and description attributes here for the weak entity we also need the primary key of the parent uh, or, or the uh, of the strong entity right in this picture the strong side is student so to find a unique uh, medical report i need the primary key of the student as well so we are keeping it here sid the primary key for this weak entity is going to be date plus sid sid was the primary key of the strong side and it is also a foreign key that ref references the SID of a student but remember we just named uh, the table student as student with advisor so it's included with that table name here any questions or problems about this one so for a weak entity set the primary key is going to be the partial key of this weak entity plus the primary key of the strong entity in this case for a student there is SID so date and SID is the primary key for this table and SID is a foreign key because SID is not included directly in the medical report but SID is uh, related to the ID of a student we also have aggregate relationships so in the aggregate relationship what we were doing was actually we are connecting some other relationship to an existing one so we would like to connect our aggregate relationship to a different relationship inside the dashed rectangle for this example remember we merged the course and gives tables right because of that we need to connect it to the uh, table that includes the gives relationship if we go back a little actually to sorry this one remember we combined the course and gives tables together and the relationship is actually included in the course table because of that uh, our 
aggregate relationship enrolled is going to be connected to the course table. So this is going to be the relational schema for this example. Remember for the teacher, we have TID, it is the primary key. Then we uh, included the gives relationship within the course table. So for a course, we have the primary key as our course code. Since the primary key of the course table is course code, then this enrolled table is going to be connected to the course table. So in here, we are keeping a course code that's a foreign key to the course code of the course table. And again, similarly, uh, a student is called student with advisor. For the student table, our primary key was SID. So this enrolled relationship, it needs two foreign key attributes. So one was to connect it to the course table. The other one is to connect it to the student table. So one of them is the course code and the other is SID for the student. It is going to refer to a student in the student with advisor table. It is going to be related to the attribute called SID. So let's give a 10 minutes break now and we will yeah, continue. May I say something sure. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, why don't we use the teacher ID in the enrolled and uh, relation table? Okay, in the enrolled relation, so for this one, uh, we need to connect it to a course actually. So we need to connect it to the relationship, right? To the relationship gives. And if we go back, we know that every course is going to be in this relationship gives. But if we look at from the other side, okay, okay. not every teacher is in this relationship. No problem. Any Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Okay, let's give a 10 minutes break now.
Any other questions before we start? So there was a question if you left early uh, saying that why enroll is not connected to uh, through a teacher's ID and if you remember in our gives relationship not every teacher is going to teach a course but for every course there should be a teacher that is teaching that course because of that we decided to reduce the number of tables to also uh, enforce total participation through the design of our uh, tables we decided to combine the relationship gives with the entity set course because of that this relationship gives is actually contained in our course table and for an aggregate relationship if we want to connect enrolled to the relationship we actually what we want is to connect enrolled to the course table so because of that when we write our uh, tables for the enrolled table we need two foreign keys one foreign key to find the student one foreign key to find the uh, entry in the gives relationship but actually the gives relationship is contained in the course table because of that enrolled is going to refer to course table so we keep course code and SID in enrolled table additionally we have the grade attributes here and since this is a many to many relationship so for aggregate relationships as well uh, the same apply whether this is a one to many many to many or one to one relationship it is determined by uh, the arrows so this is a many to many version and because of that our primary key is going to be the combination of all our foreign keys and our foreign key course code is going to refer to the course code of a course right in the course table uh, this is going to refer to a course code and on the other side this is going to SID is going to refer to a student uh, through his SID and our student table was actually called student with advisor so in this case we are uh, referencing a student table because of the student entity is actually within this table so the table student with advisor contains the entity set student and the relationship advisor we are referring to it because the student entity set is contained in this table so whenever you merge tables multiple things are in the same table and for any of those parts so in this case for example to refer to the entity set we are referring to the student with advisor table but in the other case actually to refer to the relationship we are referring to the course table so these are like some things to notice and uh, this is an aggregate, aggregate relationship example where we do not merge anything inside the dashed rectangle so we are using just letters for the attributes and the entity set names here for example for the table a our primary key is k we also have this additional attribute l for table b our primary key is x and we have the attribute y and we have the relationship r so to write the relationship r what we need is a foreign key that is going to refer to the primary key of a table a so we keep k here right so k is a foreign key that is going to refer to the k inside table a and on the other side we need some foreign key that is going to refer to the primary key of the table b and that is going to be called x in table r so x is a foreign key which refers to the attribute x which is the primary key of table b so this is the relationship for r and for c this is just another table right the primary key is u for this table and for the aggregate relationship now this time for this aggregate relationship we need to store a foreign key that is going to find an entry in the table c 
and for that we need the primary key u right so in this aggregate relationship u is a foreign key so u refers to an entry in table c through the attribute u and we also need another attribute or, or let me say it like this we need some other foreign key for table ar and that foreign key is going to be used for finding a unique row inside table r and if we look at table r in table r the primary key is the combination of k and x so to find a unique entry for r we both need k and x right together because of that in the aggregate relationship we store k and x attributes both k and x are together used as a foreign key to refer to table r and they are referring the matching attribute names k and x and since this is a many-to-many -many relationship the primary key for the aggregate relationship ar are going to be the combination of all its foreign keys and that's k x and u all together so this is an example when we do not merge anything inside the dashed rectangle so in the dashed, dashed rectangle we do not merge anything then we need to refer to the relationship the table of the relationship is called r in this example and ar refers to table r using the attributes k and x so the primary key of the r is k and x together because this is a many-to-many -many relationship if this was one-to-one -one or one-to-many then the primary key might change accordingly but in this example this is the the, the relationship inside the dashed rectangle is a many-to-many -many relationship then we need like uh, the composite primary key any questions about this one so we have turning relationships they are just relationships but we have links to more than two entity sets for example for turning relationship we have three uh, entity sets connected to the relationship because of that we need three different foreign keys and the primary key is going to be decided based on the cardinality again if this is a main to main to many relationship then we need to include uh, all the foreign keys here but for example it can be uh, one side might be non-repeating for example in this picture c entries are going to be non-repeating so for a c there can be only one a and b matched in this example because of that the non-repeating side is going to be our primary key so the attribute u were referring to the table c because of that if the attribute u is the primary key for this turner relationship then we are done uh, so that is going to be our setup but if it is for example if both b and c are not repeating then we need to select one of them as the primary key and for the other one we need to say it is going to contain unique entries so for these ones uh, I would recommend you to like quickly sketch a table for example for this one uh, for the uh, relationship T uh, what our data looks like for example our columns are going to be K U and X so we have those attributes there and which one are which attributes are not going to repeat then we, we can choose our primary keys and for the remaining ones we can assign them as unique for example these two are going to be equivalent we either select u as our primary key and then for x we need to say it is unique or we can say x is our primary key then we need to say that u is going to contain unique values so this f is our uh, additional attribute in this table so sometimes uh, rather than to write all the details we might just show the attributes we can underline the attributes that make up the primary key and we can also write our foreign key attributes and the tables and the corresponding attributes that they refer to as a short notation so again there is no standard way of writing it uh, but 
in the short notation we actually want three things we need to know the attribute names we need to know what is our primary key and we need to know the foreign key attributes and where they are referring to so these three things uh, we omit the details for for example uh, the types and um, for uh, unique and not null uh, keywords again we are kind of omitting these de details in the short notation but with uh, the this longer notation for the next stage of the project we you are going to write the relational schema according to your er diagram so that is actually going to be a, a design stage for your project so for now you are right uh, you are making the er diagram you are going to send your er diagrams we are going to give you feedback uh, according to it and then you have chance to fix uh, your mistakes in the ER diagram we are going to also ask you to write the relational schema for your tables so in the ER diagram you are showing your design but then before starting to create your tables you are going to actually show us the picture how the tables are looking uh, and what are our primary keys what are our uh, data types etc so it is going to uh, give us more information about your design so in here, uh, we also have it on the lab homepage. We have the relational schema for our diagram from the previous lab. So if we, uh, let me open it. So this is uh, actually the relational schema for our ER diagram from last lab. Remember, in the last lab, we uh, made an ER diagram, and this is the relational schema that corresponds to that. So, uh, actually, in the slides as well, we have some parts of it. So, in, in these slides, these examples with teachers, medical reports, etc., they are uh, from this project description. Now, we would like to create our tables for this implementation and for that we are going to use SQL Let Studio there is our link for SQL Let Studio on the slides and if you also so let me actually uh, show it on the lab page as well so this is the new version of our lab homepage and in here we have a link for SQL Let Studio as well here so this is the uh, relational schema example so that's the that's this document so it is showing the table definitions for the ER diagram from last lab and we also have the SQL database file that we are going to now create so we are going to create uh, this file but uh, this is the completed version of it so for creating our database we are going to use SQL studio so you can create a database through SQL commands like uh, you have create table SQL uh, queries right you can create the tables you can define the data types etc uh, but an easier way of doing it is using a software like uh, this one so this is one of many alternatives and you can go through like uh, the download option it is available for uh, major operating systems so I already have it downloaded but like if you need it for a different operating system I guess whenever uh, you go to that page it is uh, going to detect your operating system but if you need the different versions they are here as well for uh, some major operating systems and if you downloaded it uh, and unzip it is going to be a folder like this so in here we have SQL Studio uh, executable file so uh, you are going to need it for the implementation stage one so what we have done so far creating the relational schema or writing the relational schema according to an ER diagram this is design stage two of the project after you give you uh, after you give us our, your relational schema and the corrected ER diagrams you are going to start creating your database and now we are going to look what you are going to do in implementation stage one so this is like the third part of the project so after you download SQL Studio 
if you run it, you will see something like this. So in here, you can include many database files. So it is for creating SQL lit databases. You can open existing ones or you can create new ones. And to both of them, to do both of them, you need to go through database and then add a database. So we would like to create a new database in this case. So to open an existing one, I need to browse, browse for it, right? Uh, I'm using this option to open an existing database file. Then I need to locate that file, open it, and I will see my database there. In this case, I would like to create a new one. And to create a new one, I'm going to use this plus sign, create a new database. I'm going to locate some folder to save my database file. And the database file extension is .db. So there are like different extensions as well. But if you say .db, it is saying that this is a database file. So let me do it for lab2. So I'm calling this file lab2.db. And for your projects, it can be like anything else with the db extension. I uh, find some folder to save my file. And you also have uh, a name for this database. So other than the name of the file, you can assign a different name to your database. So that's that. And this permanent option is going to keep your database in this program. So whenever you create a new database, sometimes you may connect to, to that database. You might create tables, insert data, operate on it, and then close your connection. And this permanent setting is going to keep your connection or, or the database uh, file here so that you can uh, access it in an easier way. So we are going to keep the connection uh, permanent as well. So whenever you click on OK, it is going to create your database. So this is our database. If you click, if you double click on it, it, it will show the uh, contents of it. So if you right click, you can disconnect from this database. So the permanent option is actually keeping this link here. We are not always connected to the database, but whenever you double click on it, it is going to connect and then we can operate on that database. We might have multiple databases here as well. So it says tables and views and there is nothing inside this database yet. We would like to start by creating tables and actually uh, for this lab, we are going to look at the relational schema, this relational schema, and we are going to try to create these tables uh, in our database. So first we would like to create a user table. So I'm going to create a new table. So I need the connection. I double clicked on my uh, lab2 database and this button is for creating a table and for some of these there are also uh, many options. So under structure create table is here as well but uh, it is easier to use this button. So whenever I click on create table you might notice that uh, I increased the uh, text size of the font uh, so that it is better visible on small screens, but you don't need to like uh, change those settings. So I see uh, the table creation window. So I need to have a name for this table, right? It says table name here, and this is going to be for the user table. So the table name is going to be user. And for the user table, I need four different attributes, right? ID, name, surname, and password. So I would like to create new columns actually. So there's this add column button here. I'm going to click on it. I can give the name of the column. So the name of the column is going to be ID for this first attribute. And I'm going to also choose the data type. For SQL lit databases, the data type is not automatically checked. So that's some easier uh, version of SQL. SQL lit is uh, because some of these points, it's kind of simpler, easier. But in some other SQL, you have to give the data type as well. So to be ready for such things, uh, although you do not have to do it for this database as well, for SQL lit databases, it is better to give the data types as well. So the ID is going to be numeric. So we decided to have it numeric and it is going to contain not null values. So we included the not null keyword. Then I'm going to choose this not null option here. So these options are actually 
uh, for attributes to select one attribute as the primary key I have this option to assign it as a foreign key I have this option uh, to make it uh, contain unique values I can choose this option so this is for, for not null values so if I choose ID as not null I have to have some ID actually if you look we decided to make ID the single primary key of this table as well so if some attribute is the only primary key of a table then I can choose this primary key from uh, the attribute settings so while creating this column or the attribute I can choose it as the primary key if it is the single primary key of the table we will see how to choose composite ones uh, in later examples but if I click on OK then my attribute here is listed I see the data type I see it's a primary key and it is going to contain not null values but it is not yet created so while we are designing a table we need to also save our settings or commit our changes so to do that this is the button so commit structure changes so whenever you change a table whenever you change data etc you are not directly modifying the database you are actually forming some queries through this interface and when we are done we are going to commit it and commit is going to for example right now this is showing that this is the SQL query that we are going to uh, execute on the database. So I can see uh, it from here. Um, if I click on OK, I will see at bottom under status, it is saying that committed changes for the table user successfully. So nothing went wrong. Uh, after committing, if I look at here under tables, I have the user table. And if I expand user, I see that under columns I have the ID column there so after the changes we have to commit otherwise they the settings the changes are not being saved so now let's continue with the other attributes so I need name surname and password they are all going to be text and for password it is going to be not null so I'm going to create additional columns so this one is going to be called name it is going to contain text values I need another column so I'm just clicking on this one it is going to be called the surname and it is going to contain text values I click on OK and then I need another column this is going to be for the password it is going to again contain text values but this one is also going to be not now uh, you might see that uh, the primary key option is not there because we already assigned a single attribute primary key for this table if you want to assign multiple attributes as the primary key as a composite primary key then we need to uh, use a different way so for now for the other attributes if one of them is the primary key uh, by itself then we cannot assign another one as the primary key so let me go back if you need to edit some existing column you just double click on it and you are back to this options so for example I can get rid of the primary key for ID I'm going to click on OK and then to assign a table primary key our option is this button so attributes have some options attributes by itself can be a primary key then no other attribute can be assigned as the primary key but if multiple columns multiple attributes are going to be the primary key then that's called a table primary key and to do that this is the button if I click on here then I can choose multiple attributes to become the primary key of this table but in the design if you look ID is our single primary key because of that I'm going to double click on ID set it as the primary key click on OK but the save but the changes are not saved yet right I need to commit the changes so while I'm here I click on commit now this is showing uh, more text right because uh, I have an existing user table already I'm changing this table altering this table if there were some data inserted in this table it is going to get the, those data and insert it into the user table back so it is actually creating a temporary table first 
and then it is getting rid of the original user table and it is creating a new user table with the uh, settings we just described here, ID, name, surname, password, etc. And then it is going to uh, get the values back from the temporary table and it is getting rid of the temporary table as well. So these we don't need to like uh, think or consider too much. It is going to do its job. If we click on OK, then it is going to create this new version of the user table for us. So any questions or problems so far? So we have seen how to create a single table. And for every table, we also have the data part. So this is showing the structure of the table. So these are separate windows. I can close that window. And if I want to edit the user table, what I need to do is to double click on the user table under tables in my database. So if I double click on the user table, it brings the structure view again. I can go back and edit some of our attributes. I can also look at the data portion. So the data shows the entries inside this table. So to add a new entry, I have this plus sign here. If I click on it, it is going to insert a new row. I'm able to write some data here. So I wrote some data, but it is not yet commented. So you will see a blue border around the new data. For example, I can click on plus again to insert some new data. So under the options, so you have option to place new rows above or below your selection. So in my version, it's selected as the below one. But for example, I can say to maybe name is not defined for this one. I write some data here. They are not committed yet because of that it did not check for uh, some rules so whenever i click on this commit button it is going to insert this new data or save it to our database and for example the primary key should be unique right uh, for this uh, the commit operation succeeded we did not get any errors the data is now in our database. Let me add some new rows. For example, I can say the ID is again, let's assign ID two for this uh, new user. I might write something here. I did not commit yet. Whenever I click on the commit button, it is going to give me the error this time, error while committing new row. It says unique constraint failed for user.id. So user.id, since it is the primary key of this table, it should be unique, but this constraint fails because of the data that I just wrote here. I cannot commit this new line. There could be, for example, some lines that succeeds with the commit operation. But because of this failing line, so this is not committed also. It tries to commit them in order. Uh, this cannot commit because of mm, unique constraint fails for ID. So I need to change the ID for this row. Then I can commit my data. I can create a new one. For example, for this one, let's say I omit the password. I do not write anything here. If I try to commit this one, uh, it is now going to say that it fails the not null constraint for user.password. Password cannot be null, but I'm uh, not giving any values for it. Then it is failing a constraint. Therefore, it cannot commit this line. So I can unroll or uh, uh, I can uh, roll back. So if you click on this one, the red line, that entry will be gone. So I'm no longer trying to insert that one. So for each of the tables, we have the structure and the data. Data is what's inserted in that, in that table and structure is the design of that table. So let's continue with the other tables. So I need a teacher table teacher is a child table. So we are going to need the TID in this table, which is going to be the single primary key. It is also a foreign key that is going to refer to a user's ID. Since we need to refer to a user's ID, I need to first create this user table, which we did. We committed our changes for the user table. Uh, then if I go to create a, a new table option, so this is going to be a new table. My user table is there. This is going to be for a teacher. I need the column TID here. It is going to be the primary key for this table. It should be using the numeric type 
Why? Because in our design it says numeric and it is going to refer to a user's ID which is also numeric. So the referring types should match ID and TID should have the same type. So going back, it is going to be the primary key, it is numeric. And other than that, it is going to be a foreign key. So I'm enabling the foreign key option here. I need to configure the foreign key because foreign key needs a foreign table as well. So I'm going to choose the configure option. Under here, I have my existing tables. So if I did not create the user table first, then I cannot see the user table here. So I need to like uh, do this operation after I create the user table and after I commit its changes. So the foreign table is going to be the user table and the foreign column. So with this attribute TID, what we are going to match is going to be the primary key of this user table, which is called ID. So I'm choosing ID here. So these reactions on update and on delete are there to make our lives easier because whenever we change something in this table, uh, so let's look maybe with an example. So I'm going to, for on update and on delete options, I'm going to choose the cascade option. So let me first choose it and then show what it does. So going back to our uh, design or structure, our table is not committed yet. I need to commit our changes, right? We are going to create this new table uh, with on update and on delete cascade options. So this is our foreign key. So it committed the changes successfully. If I go back to my user table, let's look at the data. So these are our entries right we have ids one two five and four so one of them let's assign for example the user with id five as a teacher so to do that i need to go into the teacher table i double click on that so this is the structure of the table i need to go into the data portion so whenever i want to assign some user as a teacher i need to insert the id of that user right so that's id should be an existing user so you will see that uh, now, while trying to enter some new data here, if you double click, you will see this arrow here. What it shows is the existing users. So these are the existing users. I can choose among the existing users only. I cannot, for example, here, 99, if I try to write 99 here, and if I try to commit my changes, then it's going to give an error saying that foreign key constraint failed. So this is a foreign key, meaning that it should refer to an existing user's ID. So if I look at five is a valid value here. So clicking on enter there, uh, if I try to commit changes now, I can commit my changes. So TID five, this refers to the user with ID five. That's an existing user. Therefore, I can assign that user as a teacher. So for example, if I want to include one more, I'm going to click on uh, plus and then from this list by double clicking on this uh, area, I can choose another user as a teacher. If I choose five again, what is going to happen is because TID is the primary key for this table, this time the unique constraint fails for teacher's TID. So I need to choose some other existing user as a teacher. Then let's say, at some po point, uh, we update the ID of user 5. So now it will be 55, for example. I'm updating the ID of the user, which is the parent entity. I'm going to commit my changes. And if I go back to the teacher table again, so I need to refresh. So if I refresh it, so this is the refresh op option some changes in some other table could cause changes in a different table right uh, because of that i need to sometimes refresh the table data and because we choose cascade on update when we update the parent it is also changed in the child so teacher was the child portion in here uh, this is automatically updated because of the cascade option another thing in the user table, for example, we may get rid of user with ID 55 
to get rid of that, what I need to do, uh, I need to select that uh, line. If you click on this uh, number here, it is going to select the row. And you can choose delete selected row. So if I delete that row, and if I commit my changes, now if I go back to the teacher table and refresh, then 55 is no longer there. So both of this happen because in the structure of our uh, teacher table, for the TID attribute, the foreign key, on update and on delete, we choose the cascade option. So that's what cascade option does. And it makes our lives easier because we keep the referential integrity of our database. So whenever we delete something on the parent side, then we don't need to go back and check it on different related tables. It is done automatically because of these settings. Any problems, questions with this one? So for the student table, we are going to do the similar one. So our student table is actually called student with advisor. So let's now, uh, so we actually committed these changes. I'm going to close these ones and I'm going to now create a new table and that will be called student with advisor. I need some attributes here, right? Uh, let me look at here, SID scholarship and advisor TID. So I'm going to uh, create those. SID is going to be the single primary key for this table. It's going to contain numeric values. And let's also check uh, it is going to contain not null values. So I need to enable the not null option here as well. So I need another column. This is going to be for scholarship. It's going to contain numeric values. And for this one, not all students are going to have scholarship, therefore there is no not null option. Uh, we need the advisor TID, the next one. So this is going to again contain uh, numeric values. It is going to be a foreign key. So if we check our description, advisor TID is a foreign key that is going to refer to a teacher's TID. So then in here, I need to configure the foreign key. The foreign table is going to be the teacher table. Therefore, I need to first create the teacher table. Then I need to make the setting. So it is going to refer to the foreign, foreign attribute TID. And for on update and on delete, I'm going to enable the cascade options. And this is going to also contain not null values. And this is our table for a student. I'm going to commit these changes for a student and we don't get any errors. We are done with the student table as well. Then we have the send table and in send table one difference is that we need to assign a composite primary key. So that's going to be something different other than that uh, many uh, parts of this is going to be very similar to what we have done already. So let me keep this on side. So I want a new table, right? I'm going to create a new table. This is going to be called send. I need to add some columns. One of them is going to be the sender ID. It's going to contain numeric values. It's going to be not null. And it's a foreign key to the user uh, table. So it's a foreign key. I need to configure this foreign key. The foreign table is called user and we are referring to the ID attribute there and I'm going to choose cascade on update and cascade on delete options. I'm going to apply those, click on OK. Another column, this is going to be called receiver ID. It's going to contain numeric values. It's going to be not null and it's another foreign key. I need to configure this foreign key. The foreign table is user. Uh, the foreign attribute is ID and for on delete and on update options we are choosing cascade because uh, this cascade option makes our lives easier so uh, that's the only thing uh, why we choose them so I'm going to click on OK there is the message attribute so another attribute for this one is going to be a text and no other option is selected another column this is going to be for date it is going to contain 
date uh, type of objects uh, and it should be also not null right I'm choosing the not null option here as well and for this table our primary key is a composite one so I uh, do not select it for any of the attributes as the primary key because it's going to be uh, the combination of multiple attributes therefore I need to assign it as a table primary key so this is the option to do that uh, sender ID receiver ID and date both these three attributes are going to be our primary key so these are used for sorting uh, them for example when you are sorting the entries of these tables whether you sort in ascending and descending order for each of these attributes so you can like choose different options but the default settings for uh, a table primary key is good enough for us so we are going to click on create so we see the tables primary key here so that can be only one primary key we cannot add any, any other primary key for this table but the primary key can be a composite one it can contain multiple attributes so we are done with this table we are going to click on commit button so for any of your designs don't forget to click on commit otherwise it doesn't save it uh, when you try to close the application it might ask you whether you want to commit or not but uh, whenever you create a table make sure that you also commit the changes when you are uh, done with that so we need another table for course I'm going to click on create new table this is going to be for a course we need some attributes right course code it's going to be numeric type it's going to contain not null values and it is the single primary key of this table so I can just choose it as the primary key through the settings for the attributes so I'm going to include a description it's going to contain text values and other than that no other setting is selected and then I have instructor TID here it's going to contain numeric values it will be not now and it is also the foreign key so it is going to refer to a teacher so I'm choosing the teacher as the foreign table and the foreign column the attribute is there is only one attribute it is going to be the primary key of the teacher table and for on update and on delete I'm going to choose the cascade options so then other than that I'm done I will click on the commit option we have two more tables so one is for the week entity remember has medical report so let's create another table has medical report and this one has date which contains date type of objects it is not null and we have the primary key as the combination of multiple attributes therefore I'm not yet choosing it so another column description it contains texts another column it's SID it contains numeric values it is going to be a foreign key that references the student table and it is called as student with advisor in our version so I'm enabling the on update and on delete cascade options as well so for SID it contains not null values I need to choose not null from here as well and I need to assign the primary key of my table so for every table I need some primary key whether it's a single attribute or a composite one it is uh, decided through the design but I need to have some primary key otherwise I don't have any option to find a unique entry in my table so for this one it's going to be a table primary key because we have two attributes that contribute to the primary key so I need to select date and SID for this table and I will click on create and I will commit the changes for this table as well let's also do this enroll table uh, so I'm going to create another table this is called enrolled and in here I need course code which is not now which is going to contain numeric values and it is going to be a foreign key right course code is a foreign key that refers to the course table so foreign key I'm going to choose it as course it refers to the course code of the course table 
I'm enabling the cascade options for on update and on delete. So other than that, uh, we also need SID in this table. So I'm creating another column called SID, which contains numeric values. And it's going to be not null and it is another foreign key. So we have two attributes and both of them are foreign keys, two different tables. So SID is going to refer to a student with advisor to its SID. And I enable the cascade options for on update and on delete. And I click on OK. So we also need a grade column here. So grade attribute will contain numeric values. Uh, other than that, there is no other option we describe for this one. So for this table, I'm going to add a table primary key. So course code and SID together are going to be the primary key for this table. And then we need to commit our changes. So we have seen uh, how to create the tables for the relational schema example that we have here. And for these ones, uh, just one thing is missing. And that's to have a table foreign key. So let me actually now show how to do it for a table. So for that, I'm going to create uh, some other table. So let's say I have a table A, for example. And in this table A, let's have columns X. So this is one column and another column Y. So in table A, I have two attributes X and Y. And they are both going to be the primary key for this table. So I'm going to commit my changes. Uh, I can omit the data types. I can omit all those details. I can still create those the table. So in SQL Lit, you don't have to specify the data type. Uh, but in some other SQL language, you might need to uh, specify the data type. So just to follow those conventions, we are uh, defining the data types. Otherwise, in SQL Lit, you don't need to. So this is our table A. Mm -hmm. Let's have another table called B, for example. And in B table, let's have a column Z and T, for example. And let's say Z is the only primary key for this table. I'm going to commit the changes for this table as well. And let's have another relationship. So relationship is called R in this example. And this is a relationship, let's say, between A and B. So I need uh, some foreign key to refer to the primary key of table A. And in table A, we had X and Y, if you remember. So X and Y is going to refer to table A. So if you check the columns of A, they are X and Y. If we check the columns of B, it, they are Z and T. But the primary key is only Z. So if I look at the table B, my primary key is only Z. So I need another attribute here called Z. So these are my attributes in table R. But X and Y are going to together refer to able, table A. So X and Y together are going to become a foreign key. So through these settings, if I choose the foreign key option, while we configure it, for example, they are going to refer to A, but they actually need to refer to X and Y together at the same time. This option is used for defining single attribute foreign keys. So if multiple attributes are going to be my foreign key, then I need to add a table foreign key. So this is the option. This is the button to do that. I need to add a table foreign key. And the foreign table is going to be the table A in this example. So these are my local columns, right? I have in this table. So let me actually make it larger. In this table, in this new table R, I have the attributes X, Y, and Z. And some of them at the same time could refer to some attribute in table A. And those are going to be actually X and Y. X and Y in R. Are going to x is going to refer to x and y is going to refer to y in the foreign table a so again i can uh, enable the on updates and on delete cascade options and i'm going to create this as my table foreign key 
For that, it is just a foreign key to table B, and it is a single attribute foreign key. Therefore, I can define it through this option. So, no need to define it as a table foreign key. I can have multiple table foreign keys in here. I can click on here and choose another foreign table, for example, for B as well. I can use this setting. So Z in this table R is going to refer to Z in table B. I can enable the cascade options here. So I can use this uh, setting as well as a table foreign key. If an attribute is the single uh, uh, by itself, if it is the foreign key, then we can just set it through this foreign key option under an attribute as well. But if multiple attributes are going to become the foreign key together, then we need to add them as a table foreign key. So in then then uh, we can assign the foreign uh, sorry we can assign the primary key for this table as well for R. Let's say uh, if this was a for example many to many relationship then both x, y, and z are going to be the primary key for this table. So I can commit it like this, for example. So that's one option. And maybe one side is going to be a repeating uh, side. So for example, let's consider this one. If R was a one-to-many relationship, and if A was not repeating, so remember, we may need to define some attributes are unique. If B part is going to be the non-repeating side, one option was to just select uh, this foreign key Z as our single primary key. Another option was to make the primary key the combination of all our foreign keys. And then we need to select the non-repeating ones as unique. So for example, one option is going to be for Z, I can say it is going to contain unique values. But sometimes, multiple attributes may need to be unique as well together. So that's called a table unique constraint. So these are like more rare uh, in your projects. Maybe you do not encounter them, but just to know them. Attributes together may be unique as well. So if I choose, for example, X and Y together are going to be unique, then uh, for example, X for X and Y values together, they are going to be unique. Whenever we look at single columns, they may have repeated values, but for the combination of X and Y, then we are not going to have any repeating values. So that's also another option. So we might have uh, some unique constraints for multiple attributes together as well. And then, uh, for example, I'm able to commit, there is no uh, errors. Uh, then we can like populate our database. So starting it with the parent of the uh, is a relationship, for example, it's a good place to start populating your databases. Uh, why? Because whenever I need to insert a new teacher in the data portion, that teacher's TID should belong to an existing user. So similarly for a student, if I go to the data portion of a student, if I click on insert data for the SID of the student, this SID should actually, uh, if you look at the structure, actually we forgot to assign it as a foreign key. So let me go back and check it, uh, fix it. So SID of a student is a foreign key, right? Because the student has the parent as user. So the foreign key is going to be the user table in this case. We refer to the ID attribute and we cascade on update and on delete. So I need to commit these changes. And going back to the data portion. Now if I double click on, uh, sorry, we committed our changes. Uh, now whenever I try to create a new student, I see that for the SID, I have the options. These are the existing users. I can choose one of the existing users. And then I can also choose one teacher as the advisor of the student. Then I'm able to commit this. Uh, for example, to give a medical report, if I go to the data portion in here, I have the option to give the date. Uh, for example, let's say uh, today's date. And this is like the format that we use in SQL Let. Uh, so some description. And for here, uh, I need to choose an existing student so that I'm able to commit my changes. So uh, 
if you go here on our website, there is this finished SQL database. It is actually the finished version of what we did in this lab. So you may download it. So it is called lab2db, for example. In here, uh, I might open it in SQL Studio. To do that, I need to add a new database, right? I need to browse for an existing database. And in here, if I go to uh, that folder, and um, this is going to be my database and for the name, uh, since I already have a lab2 in the list, uh, it, it appends some uh, other number to the end of the list. And if I click on OK, if you double click on this database, you will see that, OK, we have course enrolled tables, etc. And if I double click on the user table, if I go to the, use, the, 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 the data portion, then I see that there is some data. If you need to like play with the data, uh, you have these options here. Any questions, problems? So that's the end of our lab today. And like, for example, if you want to play around, uh, you can like download this database and like uh, check the data, uh, try to change something. For example, uh, in the enrolled table, we are assigning uh, a student to a course. So SID and course code together are the primary key for this table. Because of that, the same students Students with ID 6 appears twice in this list, for example. The same course code could appear multiple times, for example. But for the same student, for a student with uh, ID 6, that student cannot get the same course again, right? If I try to change this to English 101, if I try to commit our changes, then it's going to give this error message saying that unique constraint failed for course code and SID together they should be unique because they are the primary key of this table. But with this data that you are trying to commit, trying to insert to the table, it fails. So I might click on the rollback option. It is going to switch it back. Any questions, problems? So that's it for today. If you don't have any questions, we can finish. So see you later. Ignar, Ignar,